and fresh meat. Sixto and Benin Beach Tour. 3-H Childhood Academy. And the following dollars. A blessed Sunday to all. Today is the second Sunday of Lent. As Jesus and his disciples travel to Jerusalem where suffering and death await, their journey is interrupted by an experience of Jesus' transfiguration. Up on the mountain, the three disciples get a glimpse of the glory that their master will have after his resurrection. The experience is only for a moment, but it is a source of fresh courage and new strength that will sustain them on the difficulty way of the cross. Our mass presider is Reverend Father Jose Adonis Dondon Aquino. Please all stand. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit, Amen. the Lord be with you. And with your Dear sisters and brothers, let us now acknowledge our sins and so prepare ourselves to celebrate the sacred mysteries. God have mercy on us, forgive us our sins, and bring us to everlasting life. Amen. Let us pray. O oh God, who have commanded us to listen to your beloved Son, be pleased, we pray, to nourish us inwardly by your word, that with spiritual sight made pure, we may rejoice to behold your glory. Through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God forever and ever.
from the book of Genesis. The Lord God took Abram outside and said, Look up at the sky and count the stars if you can. Just so, he added, shall your descendants be. Abram put his faith in the Lord, who credited it to him as an act of righteousness. He then said to him, I am the Lord who brought you from Ur of the Chaldeans to give you this land as a possession. O Lord God, he asked, how am I to know that I shall possess it? He answered him, Bring me a three-year-old heifer, a three-year-old she-goat, a three-year-old ram, a turtle dove, and a young pigeon. Abram brought him all these, split them in two, and placed each half opposite the other. But the birds he did not cut up. Birds of prey swooped down on the carcasses, but Abram stayed with them. As the sun was about to set, a trance fell upon Abram, and a deep, terrifying darkness enveloped him. When the sun had set and it was dark, there appeared a smoking fire pot and a flaming torch which passed between those pieces. It was on that occasion that the Lord made a covenant with Abram, saying, To your descendants I give this land, from the wadi of Egypt to the river, the Euphrates. The word of the Lord. is my light and my salvation. Whom should I fear? The Lord is my life's refuge. Of whom should I be shall see the bounty of the Lord in the land of the living. Wait for the Lord with courage. Be stout heart 
waited and wait for the Lord. The Lord is my light and my salvation. The Lord is my light and my A reading from the letter of St. Paul to the Philippians. Brothers and sisters, our citizenship is in heaven, and from it we also await a Savior, the Lord Jesus Christ. He will change our lowly body to conform with his glorified body by the power that enables him also to bring all things into subjection to himself. Therefore, my brothers and sisters, whom I love and long for, my joy, my crown, in this way stand firm in the Lord, beloved. The word of the Lord. from the Holy Gospel according to Luke. <clears throat> Jesus took Peter, John, and James and went up the mountain to pray. While he was praying, his face changed in appearance and his clothing became dazzling white. And behold, two men were conversing with him, Moses and Elijah, who appeared in glory and spoke of his exodus that he was going to accomplish in Jerusalem. Peter and his companions had been overcome by sleep, but becoming fully awake, they saw his glory and the two men standing with him. As they were about to part from him, Peter said to Jesus, Master, it is good that we are here. Let us make three tents, one for you, one for Moses and one for Elijah. But he did not know what he was saying. While he was still speaking, a cloud came and cast a shadow over them, and they became frightened when they entered the cloud. Then from the cloud came a voice that said, This is my chosen son. Listen to him. After the voice had spoken, Jesus was found alone. They fell silent and did not at that time tell anyone what they had seen. The Gospel of the Lord. What I practically appreciate, of course, among other things in today's gospel reading, is this last verse when the disciples who witnessed the transfiguration of the Lord fell silent and did not at that time tell anyone what they had seen. Because I would like to start from this particular imagery or picture. Our reflection, especially as we now enter into the second week of the season of Lent. And the season of Lent being an opportune time to really reflect, to really talk to the Lord, 
to really speak to ourselves and try to take a look into what is happening all around us in the way that we want to observe and not just say something about what is happening. In other words, in the sacred silence that God has given us as a gift as well. Why they fell silent was precisely because they were so astounded. The event that they witnessed was too much for them. But not only that, they already started responding to what the voice said from the cloud to listen to him. And this is basically what we're going to uh, reflect. You know, in our lives, we tend to talk too much. And as sometimes we even say, even our silence is still very noisy because we are not used to it. But this is the context of what the season of Lent would bring into us, most specifically and especially in our times when there are so many things happening around us. Sometimes we are just, uh, you know, we are just so surprised and amazed that these things are really happening. You know, news like unexpected or why are these things coming up? Why are these things coming out in the open? And then it just brings us shuddering, no? no? Sometimes, if especially we know certain persons and then these people are coming out in the open, and we just say, oh my God, what's happening in the world today? That's why we need to be, at the same time, also very much attuned with what is expected to happen or what we do not expect to happen. Although we need to respond to the certain details and uh, demands in our society nowadays, we really have to keep intact the so-called the, the, the ability to hear, which is none other than obedience. Obedience is actually the disposition to listen. And so this is what is interesting about today's gospel reading. When Moses and Elijah appeared with Jesus, conversing about his exodus, which we do not find in Matthew's version and in Mark's version during the transfiguration, Jesus was brought into the particular perspective with a very strong Old Testament background of what is going to happen and what his mission is all about. That exodus is his exit from this world and back to the Father where he belongs. But that exit is a very significant one because it would mean so much for those who knew who he was or who was with him and for those who were not expecting that it's going to happen to him. But the bottom line here there is this is the will of God. And so whatever he speaks, whatever he says, we have to listen. In our lives, we have to listen to so many things, the events around us, even the beatings of our hearts. Kaya ba sig, kung ano niya ta, no? Na ano niya ta, dipikto sa kasing-kasing. You know, late last night, I was watching uh, a TV program coming from the ladies who are in charge of the so-called, who are part of the so-called, uh, the heart, not the heart center. And, you know, sometimes these things can just happen to us randomly. It's better also to listen to our bodies. That is practically a given and, and actually one that we have to do, what one we must do. And then we also have to listen to the, to the events and even the grumblings of other people. Now, even to the point of being funny, because when we are so much attuned to what is happening in silence, we can even hear the grumble of our stomachs. I hope you are not experiencing it right now. No, it's not yet lunchtime anyway. But then there are so many things to feel. There are so many things to hear. That's why I love the, the understanding or the expression used by Italians when they want people to listen. Of course, there is a word which, which is audire, okay? the audio. But they do not use it when they ask friends or people to listen. What do they use? They use the word sentire. Okay? Sentire means to say, listen. Use the heart in listening. And that is also what we have in Cebuano. We do not have paminaw, but we have pamati. 
which actually is an interesting connection towards the heart because it is the heart, after all, that hears and that listens. And I don't know if you're aware of this. If you spell the word heart, the middle letters of the word heart, there are only five letters, R-E-A-R. -E and sometimes I like to make an illustration of it because even if it is the heart, where is the ear found? It's between, between the teeth and the head, H and T. But of course, it has to be brought down. That's why we have the word in Cebuano, patalinghog. Patalinghog is, it means ipatighog. No, we have to bring down to where the heart is. And from the heart, we speak to God heart to heart. Finally, without taking notice of this, the great or the, the, the most important observances that we do during Lent, which are the pillars of piety, namely fasting, fasting and abstinence, prayer and almsgiving, are actually moments of silence, moments of listening. For what reason? Of course, prayer is not only an experience or an activity that we do where we speak, where we keep on talking. We also have to listen to Him. So the season of Lent through prayer is a season of listening. Now how about fasting? Fasting has something to do with not, we do not live by bread alone, but by every word that comes from the mouth of the Lord. So fasting is a challenge to be able to be attuned and to listen. And finally, what is almsgiving? Almsgiving is listening to the needs of others because others, in others we find the Lord who also speaks to us despite the differences that we have in terms of character and actuations. But we speak to each other and with our conversations, part of it is actually God's way of touching our lives, of challenging us, and at the same time, making us aware that we have to do so many things and we have to respond to all this. So as we continue with this Eucharistic celebration, as we have just already uh, gotten deeper into the, the season of Lent, may this Lent be always something to be a listening event and moment. And as sometimes always, always in English we say, sometimes in English we say, please lend me your ears. And in the past tense, lend is lent. That's why we ask ourselves at the end of the season or at the end of our days, or at the end of the day, have we lent our ears to the word of God speaking to us in our lives and for ourselves? Amen. I believe in God, the Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth, and in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended to the dead. On the third day, he rose again. He ascended into heaven, and he seated at the right hand of the Father Almighty. From there, he will come to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and life everlasting. Amen. Dear sisters and brothers, in that transfiguration, the Father revealed the glory of His Son. Now let us pray to God our Father that He may show us the path of Christ's eternal glory as we say, Lord of light, hear us. Lord of light, hear us. For Pope Francis, bishops, priests, and deacons, may they help us to understand that Christ's glory is attained through carrying one's cross. We pray. Lord of light, hear us. For political and civil leaders, may they persevere in doing what is right especially when it proves difficult and unpopular. We pray. 
Lord of light, hear us. For young people who doubt their worth and have lost hope, may the light of transfigured Christ free them from despair and make them see what God has planned for them, we pray. Lord of light, hear us. For the coming election, may Filipino voters listen to the voice of the Holy Spirit so that they will only vote for candidates who have a heart for the poor and the marginalized, we pray. Lord of light, hear us. For the sick, the elderly, the handicapped, the abandoned, and those who are undergoing difficulties in their vocation. May they be given consolation and grace as they carry their respective crosses, we pray. Lord of light, hear us. For our beloved dead, may the love of God transform them as co-heirs to eternal life, we pray. Lord of light, hear us. Hear us, O Heavenly Father, and grant us a contrite heart and a steadfast spirit, so that we may remain faithful to you and your Son, Jesus Christ, our Lord, who lives and reigns forever and ever. Amen. Dear sisters and brothers, that your sacrifice and mine may be acceptable to God, the Father Almighty. <clears throat> may this sacrifice, O Lord, we pray, cleanse us of our faults and sanctify your faithful in body and mind for the celebration of the Paschal festivities. Through Christ our Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. Lift up your hearts. We lift up to the Lord. Let us 
us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right and just. It is truly right and just our duty and our salvation always and everywhere to give you thanks. Lord, Holy Father, Almighty and Eternal God, through Christ our Lord. For after he had told the disciples of his coming death, on the holy mountain he manifested to them his glory, to who show even by the testimony of the law and the prophets that the passion leads to the glory of the resurrection. And so with the powers of heaven we worship you constantly on earth, and before your majesty without end we acclaim. gifts we pray by sending down your spirit upon them like the dew fall so that they may become for us the body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ at the time he was betrayed and entered willingly into his passion he took bread and giving thanks broke it and gave it to his disciples saying take this all of you and eat of it for oh, this is my body, which will be given up for you. In a similar way, when supper was ended, he took the chalice, and once more giving thanks, he gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and drink from it. For this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you and for many, for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me. The mystery of faith. <clears throat> oh, death, oh Lord, and profess your resurrection. <clears throat> Therefore, as we celebrate the memorial of his death and resurrection, we offer you, Lord, the bread of life and the chalice of salvation giving thanks that you have held us worthy to be in your presence and minister to you. Humbly we pray that partaking of the body and blood of Christ we may be gathered into one by the Holy Spirit. Remember, Lord, your church spread throughout the world and bring her to the fullness of charity. Together with Francis, our Pope, and Jose, our Bishop, with his assistant bishops, all bishops and all the clergy. Remember also our brothers and sisters who have fallen asleep in the hope of the resurrection and all who have died in your mercy. Welcome them into the light of your face. Have mercy on us all, we pray, that with the Blessed Virgin Mary, Mother of God, with Blessed Joseph, her spouse, with the Blessed Apostles and all the saints who have pleased you throughout the ages, may merit to be co-heirs to eternal life and may praise and glorify you through your Son, Jesus Christ. 
through him and with him and in him. O God Almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, O glory and honor is yours forever and ever. At the Savior's command, and formed by divine teaching, we dare to say, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is. As we forgive us who trespass against us, and lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Deliver us, Lord, we pray, from every evil. Graciously grant peace in our days, that by the help of your mercy, we may be always free from sin and safe from all distress as we await the blessed hope and the coming of our Savior, Jesus the Christ. Lord Jesus Christ who said to your apostles, Peace I leave you, my peace I give you. Look not on our sins, but on the faith of your church, and graciously grant her peace and unity in accordance with your will, who live and reign forever and ever. The peace of the Lord be with you always. Let's now share with each other the sign of peace. Shalom. the Lamb of God. Behold him who takes away the sins of the world. Blessed are those called to the supper of the Lamb. Lord, I am not worthy that you should enter under my roof, but only say the word and my soul shall be healed.
Let us pray. As we receive these glorious mysteries, we make thanksgiving to you, O Lord, for allowing us while still on earth to be partakers even now of the things of heaven through Christ our Lord. just like to reiterate a very important nugget of challenge. Lent is fasting when we listen to ourselves. Lent is prayer when we listen to God. And Lent is almsgiving when we listen to others. The Lord be with you. Now bow your heads and pray for God's blessing. Bless your faithful, we pray, O Lord, with a blessing that endures forever. 
and keep them faithful to the gospel of your only begotten Son, so that they may always desire and at last attain the glory whose beauty he showed in his own body to the amazement of his apostles through Christ our Lord. May Almighty God bless you, the Father and the Son and the Holy Spirit. The Holy Eucharist has been offered. Go in peace. This live coverage of the Holy Mass is brought to you by Arthur and Christy Fresh Chicken and Fresh Meat, Sixto and Benin Beach Tour, 3H Childhood Academy, and the following dollars.